Welcome to this podcast, Social Impact of Technology. In this podcast, I'll be talking about technology and in particular, we'll be looking at some definitions of, of technology and with an aim to defining both primitive and complex technologies through a variety of examples that we'll cover in the next few minutes. So there are lots of definitions of technologies. Technology is, a, is the art, skill or cunning of hand as you can see on the screen is the collection of techniques, skills, methods and processes used in the production of goods or services or in the accomplishment of objectives such as scientific investigation. Technology can be the knowledge of techniques and processes or it can be embedded in machines, computers, devices and factories which can be operated by individuals without detailed knowledge of the workings of such things. In 1937, the American sociologist Reed Bain wrote that technology includes all tools, machines, utensils, weapons, instruments, housing, clothing, communicating and transporting devices, and the skills by which we produce and use them. So this really broad definition opens up the idea that there are primitive and complex technologies. So if we trace the development of, of humans over time, we know that some of the simplest or the most primitive technologies included things like spears and bows and arrows that were used in hunting, various sharpened stones that were used for cutting meats and other things as well. So that definition encompasses all those very primitive technologies that we're aware of. Things like the wheel, for example, was not only just used as a means of transport, but was then also used to produce energy. So really simple or very primitive uh, um, examples there of technology have developed over time. Simple theories like that of leverage, for example, uh, were used to build the pyramids. So very simple primitive technologies resulted in some uh, advancements uh, in humanity. Dictionaries and scholars have offered a variety of other definitions. The Merriam-Webster uh, Webster Dictionary offers a definition of the term, the practical application of knowledge, especially in a particular area, and a capability given by the practical application of knowledge. The term is often used to imply a specific field of technology or to refer to high technology or complex technologies or just consumer electronics rather than technology as a whole. Technology can be most broadly defined as these entities, both material and immaterial, and created by the application of mental and physical effort in order to achieve some value. In this usage, technology refers to tools and machines that may be used to solve real-world problems. It is a far-reaching term that may include simple tools such as a crowbar or a wooden spoon or more complex machines such as the International Space Station or the Large Hadron Collider, the particle accelerator in Lucerne in Switzerland. Tools and machines need not be material. Virtual technology such as computer software and business methods fall under this definition of technology. W. Brian Arthur defines technology in a similarly broad way as a means to fulfil a human purpose. The word technology can be used to refer to a collection of techniques. In this context, it is the current state of humanity's knowledge and how to combine resources to produce desired products, to solve problems, fulfil needs or satisfy wants. It includes technical methods, skills, processes, techniques, tools and raw materials. When combined with another term, such as medical technology or space technology, it refers to the state of the respective field's knowledge and tools. State-of-the-art technology refers to the complex technology available to humanity in any given field. Technology comes to us in various forms. The first example in the syllabus is to look at technology as hardware. And some examples that you can see on the screen there include appliances, gadgets and toys. In information technology, hardware is the physical aspect of, commu of computers, telecommunications and other devices. The term arose as a way to distinguish the box and the electronic circuitry and components of a computer from the program you put in it to make it do things. The program came to be known as the software, which we'll look at just in a moment. Hardware implies permanence and invariability. Software or programming can be easily varied. You can put an entirely new program in the hardware and make it create an entirely new experience for the user. You'll be familiar with this if you have uh, an iPad, for example, uh, because Apple has recently released more versions of its operating software that allow the iPad to do uh, more things than it could. 
You can, however, change the modular configurations that most computers come with by adding new adapters or cards that extend the computer's capabilities. Like software, hardware is a collective term. Hardware includes not only the computer, but also the cables, the connectors, power supply units, and peripheral devices, such as the keyboard, the mouse, audio speakers, and printers. Computer hardware refers to the physical parts of a computer and related devices. Internal hardware such as motherboards, hard drives and memory. External hardware such as monitors, keyboards, mice, printers and scanners or the peripherals. You can see on the screen that there are various examples of these technologies. You might be surprised to see that there are some examples from the kitchen. So for example, uh, white wood appliances such as stoves and fridges and dishwashers for example. Many of these now can be run via the internet through what is known as the Internet of Things or IOT. The idea behind the Internet of Things is that we can operate these things remotely via apps on our phone. So for example we can set our coffee machines to make coffee at certain times, we can turn our air conditioning systems on and off all via our mobile or smartphones. Other technologies that you can see there are wearables, so for example the Apple Watch, uh, you might even think about um, Fitbit or, or Garnet Bands etc that allow you to uh, monitor the number of steps that you take, uh, the amount of calories you consume. You can also see uh, things there like prosthetic uh, legs for example, um, they're all part of the technology as hardware. Uh, toys and other gadgets such as Wii units, you can see drones there for example and a peripheral device in the keyboard. Uh, that you can attach to a computer. Technology also comes to us as software which we touched on briefly before. The examples that we use are applications, databases and websites, so things that you should be fairly familiar with. Software technology is a general term covering the developed methods, programming languages and tools to support them that may be used in the development of software. Most of you will be familiar with the term coding, for example, which is the process that we use to create these applications or softwares. So languages such as C++ or C++, for example, or Xcode if you're uh, programming for the Apple um, OS X suite. Software can be thought of as the variable part of the computer and hardware the invariable part. Software can be divided into application software, so programs that do work users are, are interested in. So some examples that you can see on the screen, for example, are things like the Adobe Suite, or for example, Microsoft's Windows, and the operating system or the software system software, which includes any program that supports application software. So I've included some examples such as Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux are three operating systems that help our computers to, to run. The term middleware is sometimes used to describe programming that mediates between application and system software or between two different kinds of application software. For example, sending a remote work request from an application in a computer that has one kind of operating system to an application in a computer with a different operating system. So for example, you might be familiar with the fact that you can run a Windows program on a Mac computer and a system or an application known as VMware, for example, or Parallels allows you to run the Windows operating system on a Mac, and that's a good example of middleware. An additional and difficult to classify category of software is the utility, which is a small useful program with limited capabilities. Some utilities come with operating systems, like applications, utilities tend to be separately installable and capable of being used independently from the rest of the operating system. So utilities do all such as such things in the computer, for example, um, manage your battery life. So there are various examples there of technologies of software that you can see. We've got different platforms, for example, you can see Android and Apple systems, you can see the uh, Google Play Store, for example, you can see the App Store and iTunes if you're an Apple user. There are various application softwares that you can see there and we also have these other examples of uh, mobile software so for example things like Instagram, Vine, Chat um, etc that you can see and other mobile technologies that enable you to uh, do the work as you need to on, on the go. And I'm sure there are lots of examples of technology software that you can uh, think about your, yourself as well. 
In the next slide, we'll talk very briefly about the databases as well. Um, websites also need some form of programming known as HTML or hypertext uh, transfer markup language, uh, and that's a particular type of language that's used to pull together um, various websites that you're watching. However, with the advent of things like Google Sites, for example, you're able to very easily make your own websites uh, without having to learn any coding language whatsoever. Technology also comes to us as a, a way of which we organise knowledge. So in the syllabus, the syllabus looks at examples such as communications, media, internet and home entertainment. Probably the one thing that we're mostly uh, aware of is the fact that we use various search engines to find information on the internet. DuckDuckGo being and Google obviously being the three largest of the software uh, sorry, of the, of the search engines. Traditional human-based activities are increasingly challenged by computer-based retrieval techniques. So, for example, you can see the Dewey Decimal System in which all the information in the library catalogs, so it makes it easy for you to find that information on the shelf. Of course, this is being challenged by Google, for example, whose mission is to organise the world's information and make it universal, universally accessible and useful for everyone. The term knowledge organisation re relates to a field of study that relates to the library and information science. In this meaning, knowledge organisation is about activities such as document description, indexing and classification performed in libraries, databases and archives. So some examples that you can see on the screen are things like the meta tags and the hashtags that we use to organise knowledge and information in some of our social media, so for example in Twitter and Facebook. These activities are done by librarians, archivists, subject specialists, as well as by computer algorithms. In a study which is concerned with the nature and quality of such knowledge called organising processes, as well as the knowledge systems themselves that we use to organise documents, document representations and concepts. So, for example, Google will audit its search by certain keywords that you punch in, but it will also order its search by the number of clicks that people make. So for example, the most popularly visited sites are the ones that appear closest to the list, and then any related pages are those where people click in and out of those particular pages. So Google will use its algorithms to organise information and show you that information relative to what its human data is telling um, them about what is most popular and what is probably the best representation of that particular keyword. The knowledge organisation may be defined as an organisation that recognises the primary value of both explicit and tacit knowledge within its workforce and implements strategies to enhance the leverage of that particular knowledge. In other words, that means that we gather the knowledge together and put it somewhere so it's easily accessible, that in fact it's not kept in people's heads and it's easily available for people to use. So for example, Google Sheets or Excel or databases are good examples of how we can take a lot of information and put them in places that are accessible for an organisation to be able to access. Knowledge management promotes an integrated approach to identifying, capturing, retrieving, sharing and evaluating an enterprise's information assets. These information assets may include databases, documents, policies, procedures, as well as uncaptured tacit expertise and experience. Much of today's knowledge management is simply systems analysis, human resource management or organisation development. Um, the difference is that we have explicit knowledge, which is static and it's easy to duplicate. And we have tacit knowledge, which is gained from experience and is usually passed on face-to-face uh, -face rather than instilled by formal education and training. So there are some really good examples of uh, technology in its various forms. I'm sure that you're aware of other applications that could very much fit the bill. We've seen there that there are some very primitive technologies that we can use, levers, crowbars, hammers, uh, screwdrivers, etc., or their more complex terms. Uh, whether they be big machinery, for example, that gets the same job done. So your job really is to have a look at those examples now and to see whether you can write for yourself some definitions with some examples of those primitive and complex technologies. I hope this podcast has proven to be useful.